Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We like to mix it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable with Boston Connect Real Estate's broker team. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined in studio tonight with my team member, Mary Baker. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. (laughs) I'm good. I've been driving around in the car all day delivering little gifts to all of our um, past clients from this year, so... It's been like a whirlwind, yeah. surprisingly, and I, I don't know, maybe um, Lisa DeMilo had a different traffic update. Traffic wasn't all that bad today, yeah. so knock on some wood that I ha- have good luck over the next couple of days. Yeah, I'm uh, typically with you every year, you know, trotting along. I know, along, I didn't have my partner. Trotting along, eating uh, beef jerky in the car <laughs> all day, not having real food. Singing uh, Christmas carols. Singing Christmas carols, getting, getting into the, the wrong car, because I oh. did that one time, remember? <laughs> Got into the wrong car in somebody's driveway. It was our very last delivery. Yeah. We hadn't she, eaten anything but beef jerky and maybe coffee all day, and I got into our client's car. <laughs> oh, in the passenger hot. seat, at least, because it was in, supposed to be Mary's day. car. Thankfully, yeah. the alarm didn't go off. Yeah. I don't know what that says. We had to go to dinner afterwards. We got, we got by pretty quick. Yeah. Um, um, but I played Mary Baker today. I, uh, I attended a... Uh, I almost said open house because that's not true. I did a home inspection today nice. for uh, Larry and Meredith Hunt. They are agents here at Boston Connect Real Estate. Um, they are in Florida right now. So uh, to help each other out, because we're one big happy family over here, I uh, attended a home inspection for them and their buyer. So um, very knowledgeable. It was in Oak Point, which Larry and Meredith, you know, live in there. And it's their wheelhouse. Like, yeah, it's their wheelhouse. And um, the client actually already lives in Oak Point. She's purchasing another. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so she was very knowledgeable, met a really great home inspector, so I gave you his card, and it was great. So I played Mary Baker today because that's what you do. I love home inspections. They're probably my favorite part of the transaction. I used to be terrified of them, but in all honesty now, I'm like, all right, let's learn something. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Let's see if I was able to pick apart the house well enough that, like, no surprises. Yeah. The best, I mean, there there was no furniture in the place, so we all just had to, like, you know, hang out. Kumbaya (laughs) Kumbaya on the floor. Kumbaya (laughs) together. You know, but it was it was awesome. So I got to play Mary Baker today, and uh, Mary Baker got to hang out alone in a car. <laughs> I got to catch up with some some of our clients and see all like the renovations and things that they've done to the house, meet their puppies. Yeah. Which oh my goodness, I'm telling you, um, oh the last the last house that we just came from, they just got a brand new puppy, and he's a beagle and English bulldog mix, mm. and he's like a merle dog, like he's like a merly color. Mm squishy little face bright blue eyes and they named him franklin after their their first home on their first the first street that they like oh bought their house together i was dying that was that was yeah. like a nice way to end the night and then i rushed in here so we could do the show yeah we could well you know we are missing the one and only sharon McNamara the one and tonight only. she is in south carolina helping Mackenzie move back up here up north she, As she accepted, starts the next yeah, chapter she starts the next chapter she is uh she accepted a job in Newport, so she's going to be starting, um, you know, 
after the first of the year, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, at, a, at a new job. So congratulations, Mackenzie McNamara. And she graduated with her master's, master's degree, degree from Clemson University. Round so of round of applause. For Mackenzie. And Sharon being the best mom around is, of course, helping her move up. So that is where Sharon is tonight, you know, because family comes first. And that's what we're about. We're trying to take the bull by the horn. I don't know what I don't know what the saying is. Trying to trying to make this show work. So here we'll, we we'll are. We'll do it. <laughs> we so, will. But with I, that, yeah, with that, Mary, why don't you introduce our very special guest tonight? Because it was your idea to have her on tonight. Um, so we have the lovely Jasmine Glasgow from Maritime Mortgage, and thank you, Jasmine, for, I literally texted her at 9 o'clock last night <laughs> and was like, so I have an idea for a radio show, and it's tomorrow, and you're on it, period. <laughs> and she's like, cool, I'm in. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us, and thank you for being on with me. You're very welcome. I always love to chat with you ladies, and this should be a fun one. I just learned the actual content of what we're talking about. <laughs> we're going to make it fun, though. Sometimes the, be- sometimes the best shows are when we're kind of just, like, going with the flow. And oh, now we have, yeah. have too many numbers. I have some numbers, but I don't have many <laughs> You couldn't yeah. over-prepare, because we know you love to do that. You're like, so I've researched everything over the past 10 years, and I'm ready at the drop of a dime. Yeah. Well, Jasmine has been on the show with us a few times, and, you know, we always get callers in and, and everything, people yeah. interacting with us. So, I mean, people love you, Jasmine. Don't you know that? One thing. <laughs> I have a face for radio, so it's great. Uh, no, except you, won't except because you we're live. are live <laughs> on, on Facebook. Well, yeah, we're talking, we can see you through Zoom, but we're also live on Facebook, so be sure to like us, um, Boston Connect Real Estate, McNamara awesome. Broker Team. If you're a part of any of the Connect pages, whether it's Pembroke Connect, Marshfield Connect, all those fun towns, uh, you can see us. We're live. If you want to join in on the conversation, you can leave us a comment on our live stream, and we'll be sure to, you know, know ask Jasmine a question or ask us a question um, or you can call into the studio and talk to us firsthand so it's 781-837-4900 George will connect you right on over to us um, but we Mary, love callers yeah, we, we love do. questions we love questions please help us <laughs> <laughs> it's like what what we you do love for a being living. asked questions all day and all night. <laughs> um, all right, Mary, this was your idea. You're taking taking the lead on this one. I'm passing the torch to you. I will do my best in that in that scenario. Okay. I'll save you if you're drowning. Oh, like, thank you. I unlike Rose it. to Jack in the Titanic, <laughs> she didn't save anybody. No, she just <laughs> let him drown. Um, anyways. So we thought, so I was thinking last night, it would be kind of interesting, just kind of preparing for 2022, you know, we're rounding out 2021. So not necessarily talking like real estate numbers, because we'll do our year end review from a real estate perspective um, next week, but more like how the mortgage industry has changed, how mortgages have changed, what trends we've seen through 2021, because we know that um, this whole year has been kind of unprecedented and something that we, I don't know that anybody, at least not me, not our team, um, anticipated being so crazy in 2021. And I thought we had a lull in like September. I thought it slowed down. And then November, end of November, December, it picked right back up. And I'm thinking a bold prediction for 2022. I'm thinking it's going to be crazy. Oh, I'm right there with you. The awesome. amount of pre-approvals that have come in through September, and we felt the same way. It, around September, especially when rates first started hiking up, which was about mid-September, the 15th in particular, we thought, okay, everyone can take a vacation finally. We haven't done it in two years. Yeah. Please go, go plan a facial in the middle of the day. You're fine. Like, it's break time. And then all of a sudden, the pre-approval inquiries came flooding in. We yeah. had one of the busiest Octobers that we have had in years on just the amount of people who were in pre-approved. With so many of them saying, we're waiting for the spring market. We're going to keep an eye out this winter, but we're oh. waiting for the spring market. And a lot of people, you know, we always advise when you're feeling like you could be ready, that's when to have the conversation because you might not be there yet versus yep. standing in a house going, I should call my loan officer. Mm-hmm. It's a little you know, you yeah. really want to do it when you th- the idea sparks you. So some of these people definitely have some prep to do over the winter. You know, we have some fun strategies to figure out if your comfortable mortgage payment is actually going to fit in your budget. 
And that's where a lot of people are um, right now from that September wave, but it has not slowed down wow. in regards to inquiries. And all of these people are saying the same exact thing. That's kind of interesting to me. That's kind of, like there was a part of me that so you mentioned interest rates rising kind of in September when you started to see that hike, right? So I yes. wonder like is some of it a little bit of fear you think that people are like, "Oh crap, what am I going to do?" Like right. I I have I have to kind of jump on, get pre-approved, but it, it sounds like more of it's being prepared for what next year is going to bring, which me as a buyer's agent, I love. I love. <laughs> It's fantastic. And the big thing that we found, you know, we usually see the last couple of weeks of August be really kind of slow and yep. people are finishing out their transactions, but they're, they're in a point of transition in their lives. Kids are going back to school, you know, daycares are picking up again, summer camps are over and people are just reestablishing themselves for what the fall lifestyle is going to be. We didn't see that this year. And so okay. when we saw that slowdown, we thought, okay, maybe this is the transition period that we usually see. And it really kind of just seems that people are coming out of the woodworks out of that out of that transition and we never got that slowdown so it was already quite busy mm -hmm. and we we're just hoping for that little pivot and i say hoping not from business perspective but from a people perspective. <laughs> from a from a personal perspective we're like okay right. this is you know every industry kind of has its waves where you're like okay i get a second to breathe and now now it's like pedal to the metal but right. the breathing never happened. Yeah, yeah. No, no. But people seem to be excited. It wasn't really coming because I thought the same thing. I mean, you know, rates. There's a lot of a lot of media on rates right now. A yeah. lot of media circling it, and you're either gonna hear one say, "Rates are still historically low," or "Mortgage rates have rose, you know, risen for the fastest time since 1935," and you're like, "Okay, wh which one is it?" And people be usually come from a point of fear when they jump on something. But this is more excitement. I'm more seeing oh. people kind of getting ready. You know, they got that promotion. They finally changed jobs. And now they're established in them and they, they want to get pre-approved, which has been a really interesting trend for us this year is that, you know, that right sizing with employment, a lot of transitions. And mm -hmm. it's probably the most frequently asked question I get is I am changing jobs. When can I buy? Mm, interesting. And a lot of people were doing that and settling into their jobs in September um, or had finally just kind of gotten through that probationary period and they're excited. So there might be some fear involved, but I don't think that that was the, the basis. I think it was more excitement. I love that. I think we're done with fear. We're yeah. done with fear. We've had two years of fear, everybody. So no let, more let's, fear. Let's, <laughs> let's go into everything with positivity and yeah. light and yeah. excitement. It, it's about to be a new year. Let's let's change our mindset. Doesn't everyone change their mindset out of like, you know, for the new years? It's like everybody yeah. goes back to the gym and then like towards like February or March, everyone. I'm not. <laughs> my, my butt is in the gym for the next year and a half of my life. And yeah. Hold me to it, guys. January 1, there's yeah. a new Mary coming to town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's because Mary has a wedding to plan for. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And I have to attend that wedding. Right, Mary? Yes, so you do. I have to lose weight, too. <laughs> So in case well, I'll be pictures. better people next yeah. year. <laughs> um, <laughs> you will be there as well. <laughs> just, just to sort of touch upon something that you mentioned. So uh, when people go to open houses and they're not pre-approved yet, it always like sort of blows my mind. And probably because I'm such a planner that like every time I've been, I've been in an open house and someone said like, oh, I have to call my loan officer. Like I haven't like either haven't been pre-approved or like I have a pre-approval, but it expired, you know, six months ago or whatever it's like oh my gosh like I would never go out shopping for something if I didn't know I could afford it so <laughs> it always blows my mind and I always like have told people like your first call should be to your loan officer like can I even afford to do this in my situation yeah um you know what can I afford is this the right time which we'll get into that um a little later yeah. in the show but it, it just always maybe because I'm just such a planner and I like to control things that like I, I think it's kind of doing things backwards when, you, when you're when you doing that um, or when you're going out to open houses and checking things out and you don't have a pre-approval. But there's also something to be said. So just these cute little buyers that I was just talking about that have this adorable puppy, um, they I actually met them at an open house. They weren't pre-approved. They didn't have an agent. They had actually never been to an open house. Um, and they were driving by and were just like, you know what? Let's start. 
So, so where where do we start? And what I, I know that there are some agents that are in there, and this house is for sale, and this is the area that I probably would like to be in. So, that's that I get, that I understand when you're when you're kind of taking that first leap. But if you're just actively kind of out there looking and you're not mm. ready, then eh, maybe don't do that. If it's your twelfth house, you might wanna you might yeah. wanna call someone. But I'm biased. I always feel I should be the first call. <laughs> Stuff, I say we're interchangeable. I say you can you can either contact me or the lender first, whomever that is. Sometimes it's the lender, and then you meet the agent. Sometimes it's the agent, and then you meet the lender. Um, so there's there's introductions that can happen either way. But yeah, we're interchangeable. You shouldn't be in open houses without pre approvals because you're 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 going into a market, and I mean this is certainly your side more than mine. But you're going into such a fast paced thing. You're looking at a product that you might need to be buying in the next day before that product's gone. Crazy. So <laughs> without that pre-approval and, you know, even if you're you're sitting there holding a pre-qual, uh, pre-qualification, which is you tell me what you make, I tell you okay or no. And That's actually a great point. I'm going to yeah. stop you right there because that, that was literally one of the things that popped up into my head yesterday. And I get asked it a lot, a lot. What is the difference between a pre-qualification and what is the difference from a pre-approval? And from a financial aspect, I want you to answer that. And then I'm going to answer it as a listing agent, what I would be, how I would be rating the two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you got, if, if you got, got one with an offer. I got them. So a lot of places use these terms interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. A pre-qualification is a general overview, might not even include a credit check, general income, you tell me what you make, I have not verified anything, I have done none of the work, and I'll tell you if those numbers fit a certain box. Now go out and shop. Someone could tell you that they're a millionaire. Yes, and uh, it happens a lot. It happens a lot, and oh we gosh. do a lot of rescue deals where someone is, they got under contract with a pre-qualification, went to underwriting, and then was denied once someone looked at their income. And that's where the big difference with a pre-approval comes in. A pre-approval is something we've already looked at your income, your assets, your credit, and we've run it through underwriting, meaning we've looked at the program, the guidelines, the cost for it, and we see that you can not only afford the house, but you qualify for the program that you're that you're running. So this has already gone through underwriting before you're out shopping. And so there's no big surprise when you when you find the house, you have the accepted offer, and you're in the process of getting your loan finalized. There's no surprises. We've done the work up front. And so a lot of times, you know, especially this year with just the high pace of applications, absolutely qualifications. The, either you have a loan officer in a call center that's not doing any of the work or they're just fitting it in or they're letting you do it themselves. Some of these softwares allow you to input things and print your own pre qualification. That's and terrifying then, to me. <laughs> and then you get under contract because the listing agent, you know, might not have the you know, might not know the difference. They might have had a really good agent to sell the pre qualification and then you're scrambling. I, mm -hmm. I must have had at least two dozen loans this year um, from these big companies in that same box, which which worked. They all worked, but they, they needed someone to do the work behind them, to change the, the program, to change the way the loan set up, to make it fit into the pretty boxes. So pre-qualification is you tell me, I'll kind of sort of look at it, and sure, go shop. It might work, it might not. A pre No guarantees. Exactly, no guarantees. A pre-approval is, if your income, your assets, your credit, everything you provided to us stays the same, you're closing on this house without a problem. Yeah, it always like sort of. I want. I don't want to say the term blows my mind again, but I guess like <laughs> I guess it does. Like because well, you're in the industry, so you're yeah. like. How? <laughs> you know, because we, we see a lot of pre-approvals or pre-qualifications, and it's like, at that point, for a pre-qualification, it's just you're taking somebody's word. And right. I, I I feel like we've been burned enough times where it's like we don't trust somebody's word. Like, we'd rather you go through the process and give a, a pre-approval so at, at least we see, like, there's some sort of tangible evidence that you actually make that kind of money Absolutely. or that you can afford this or you can put down this amount of money certainly now do you guys as listening i'm I was I'm curious about this do you present offers with pre-qualifications do you go back to the buyer's agent what do you do in those situations i would say it depends so if you're amongst you know 10 15 offers i might put and truthfully i might depending on where they come in if, if we have the pre-qualifications i might kind of put them at the bottom of the pile and say 
hey, and call the listing agent or the buyer's agent back and say, hey, do you have a pre-approval for them? I don't know that you know that this is, this is a pre-qualification. Mm -hmm. Maybe they just it, they just gave it to you or it was kind of a Hail Mary. Maybe they haven't spoken to a lender yet and they just went on some site last night to make sure that they would have something to present to you because mm -hmm. surely I'm not presenting an offer that doesn't have either. So I need something, right? Um, or in a very worst case scenario, say everything about their offer is amazing and the only thing that I don't like is that they have a pre-qualification, I'm going to recommend that they get pre-approved with one of my lenders, so you, to make sure that they are actually, uh, they can actually afford before I suggest to our clients that they're going to accept it. Yeah. Um, so I think it, I think it depends or especially maybe the only offer you have has a pre-qualification letter, then I'm definitely making sure that they're fully vetted with a, like a preferred lender for sure. Yeah. I mean, with a property that has multiple offers, we've said this before on the show, you know, one of my tasks was to create, you know, the spreadsheet for Sharon and Mary whenever they would get multiple offers on their properties. And that was one of the things that I would look at. It's either a, um, a pre-approval or pre-qualification. And we have a section in our huge spreadsheet that for notes. And so I would always put in a note like it's a pre-qualification like uh, you know call the lender or it, they didn't have anything there there's no pre-approval there's no nothing like and that was sort of the prompt uh you know for one of them to call and say you know what's what's going on with this well, you know because you have to present all offers you do. even if it's not complete you have to present them all but you know it's it's just sort of sloppy not to send a pre-approval at least well, you know, most with an pre offer qualifications from what i've seen it literally states in there you know pending verification of assets w2s ta um, tax returns uh bank statements everything and i'm going Okay, so literally you've looked at nothing. Yeah, my, my cat can pre-qualify anybody. Like, I mean, that's that's like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so she can tell you she, you have so some money for that. Just, you know, <laughs> tap, tap, tap it away. You, you did say she needed to earn a living. She yeah, she really does. It. She needs to pull her weight around that house. <laughs> She's, pre she she's just going to prequal some people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine, are you hiring? <laughs> um, due to the office allergy, I'm going to go ahead and just have to sing. Ah, oh. dang it. <laughs> and married time doesn't, well, it, I, I don't, do you guys actually issue prequalifications in any circumstance? So it's strictly pre-approval. Like that is not okay. something that it's people could go to you for. It. We'll even talk to someone. Like if someone's like, I okay. only want to do people, I don't want to, you know, I'm like, it's not something we can do. And the reason we don't do it, and the reason we take that extra step of putting through underwriting is because none of us are wizards, first of all. We can't, we can't just imagine what it's what your be stuff looks like. Yeah, we, we, we can't know that you fit the program unless you do the work. You have to do the work. Yeah. And our word in this industry is everything. When you've got highly competitive offers and my, I have to have a call with the listing agent and I do it on every offer my client submits. I need to be able to confidently say this can work. And I can't have you with a pre, you know, with our name and saying that you're our client and then have a deal fall apart because I didn't do my job. Mm. You know, I, I actually it. really appreciate that about you because I do know that from firsthand and I know that's, you know, why we worked so well together in the past and now. It's something that I've seen you put into action, even with client, mutual clients that we've had. It's been like, hey, maybe they were looking for a year and originally they were approved, but some things have changed and now we have to re-pre-approve them. And if somebody can't kind of put up what they're saying, I have watched you say, I, I just, I can't issue a pre-approval right now. You're not in the position until I can verify X, Y, and Z. And that's something that I appreciate because we have had been on the opposite side of it where we're the listing agents and we have buyers that fall out, you know, during the financing period because, and not so much recently, but in the past, I don't know if, um, if things were a little bit looser or, or I don't know, faster, um, a couple of years ago, but we used to have it where some buyers would fall out during the financing period. And it was like, surprise, we, we have no control over it. There's nothing that anybody can do except for the buyer and the lender to have been having very transparent conversations to make sure that they're on the same page, right? Um, and, and that doesn't happen with me. I'm never the buyer's agent that has to be like, 
hey, by the way, my buyer lost financing because we didn't verify X, Y, and Z. So I really appreciate that about you and your team. Thanks. And it, it just comes down to being reliable and accountable for our people. That, that's all it is. You know, yeah. you, you just have to, they trust you. The, most people haven't done it multiple times so, so frequently that they know the lingo, that they know the terms, that they are feeling comfortable with any of the financing going on. And so you just have to do that extra level. And I just had an agent pressuring me, pressuring me, pressuring me. Just give him a pre-call. He needs to put an offer. He needs to put an offer. And I, and I stuck him against I said, I really need to see something. Mm-hmm. And I need to talk to him directly. He's like, no, you can go through me. You can trust me. And I was like, well, that's a huge red flag. I can't do it. Finally, the client calls me. He's like, I hear you need to talk to me. I hear you need my documents. And I explained to him why. He provides everything over. And he has already had an offer submitted on a $1.2 million house. The agent's really excited about this permission. He's really excited because his client's been looking for a year. And this is a first house he's put an offer in on and I run the numbers and he can't qualify for more than a hundred fifty thousand dollar condo and wow uh, how devastating why? how what happened how, well so how how <laughs> devastating though imagine being okay so like you said being that agent that's super excited because yeah. I mean there's a big whatever c- compensation yeah. never count your um, dollars ne- until they're in front seriously. of you seriously <laughs> um but that's so that's sloppiness though and Sharon, if you're listening, I know she's going to love that I'm saying this. That sloppiness that you're seeing happening throughout that transaction um, is just, it's it's motivate, being motivated by money, being motivated by the next best thing, or just trying to get there as quick as you can, and not actually caring about, one, the experience of the client, yeah. or, the be, or in the best circumstance for the client, but also the people who are on the other side. So they have the, this offer in on a $1.2 million house. You're not, you don't tend to see multiple offers at that bit large of a price point. So maybe the sellers are really excited. You yeah. know, their fa- their family's getting hyped up about it. There's people involved, so. Yeah. yeah. It's, sorry, I just I, went on a rant. No, My, sorry, I, guys. I'm just curious of why it was this person once pre-approved for that amount of money? And, and obviously don't go into specifics for this, this, this person, but how could somebody get, like uh, those numbers are so far from each other that I'm just curious, right? just because, you know, when, I know it's not buying a house, I haven't bought a house yet, but when I went to go buy my car, you know, you write down, oh, how many, how, how much do you make? And, you know, I put down a number, but because, of the way that I might be paid, it it they can't account for every every single dollar that you make. So that it's it's actually a lower number. And in, you're you're spot on with exactly what happened. So they did you know some sort of spaceship click type of online thing. Yeah. And they had what website's that? Because I'd no love kidding. to think that I can afford a 1.5. <laughs> 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 okay. Out of space. Wait. And so they they went on, they had a pre-qualification, they were shopping, they, they thought they were fine, and uh, come to find out, their stated income was not on their tax returns, 100% cash, mm-hmm. and they had less than six months reference of it, because there's always solutions. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, you know, if you're, you're a self-employed business owner and your tax returns aren't super strong, but you've got bank statements for 12 months to show the activity, we have a program for that. This was brand new business, hmm. brand new cash, and none of his stated income was. It was all projected based on what his business plan said he would make. Hmm. He used that, and he was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shop until I find the right house, and I'll jump on it when I do." And six months into his new business, he found that house and only had six months of cash. It was, wow. it was completely off. And even still, his little W two number led him to like, "I mean, you can get a condo." Yeah. And you can only get this one condo because it has the HOA fee that fits in your budget. Okay. So yeah. if anybody's listening, this is like the nail in the coffin as to why you need to get pre-approved and not pre-qualified. Like, because yeah. that is the nightmare. That is the worst case scenario that you are potentially looking at. And I love you for bringing up that yeah. example. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. Not that's, for them, but <laughs> not, for, the, not, for the radio Not for them, show. but for, for everybody listening. But if you are yeah. listening... And you want to join in on the conversation, you have a question for Jasmine, you can call the studio 781-837-4900 and ask us, come on, we love we love when people call us. Yeah. Please call. <laughs> I change the subject a little bit because yeah. I'm really, really excited to talk to you about interest rates. I was going to go there. Good for you. Yeah, I stole it from you. Um, so <laughs> interest rates have been just such a hot topic. Yeah. And 
this all comes down to affordability. Really, that's it. A lot of people harp on the interest rate, especially when they're refinancing, and they should because it does impact their payment. But what it comes down to at the end of the day is how much can you afford for what you're comfortable doing? And every little tick that rates go up, it eats into affordability. Yep. And so we were talking a little bit earlier about whether rates were going up really fast or really slow. And the thing is, it's a scale. It's always going to go, it's going to move up and down and up and down and up and down, depending on how much cheesecake you eat in a day or <laughs> how much sleep you get. Really, you know, it's the same way. What's so your water people- intake? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And so these market indicators that we have, um, you know, the fear from uh, the virus, that's a huge indicator. What packages are being passed through the Senate, through the House, and what that's going to mean. And then inflation. These have been like the three big cornerstones this year that have caused rates to go up and go down. But overall, they have been steadily increasing. And year over year, and we're going to talk uh, December to December, okay. uh, December 17th of last year, the Freddie Mac interest rate. And now this is for a 30-year fixed mortgage, and it's assuming 0.6 of cost. So that's one point is 1% of your loan amount. So it's 0.6 of a point, so 60 basis points. Um, these are just assumptions that they make on the rate. And so the 30-year, uh, December 17th of 2020, was 2.67. Today, um, well, actually, today is a little bit higher, but the 17th um, of December, it was 3.12%. So we haven't gone up a crazy amount. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not, you know, so insane between 3.67 and 3.12. But when we're looking at it as a payment, and we're looking at a $500,000 loan, say, you'd have a payment uh, of roughly $2,021. And then that payment would jump up $120 by nothing else but the rate for the same $500,000. Or if you were pre-approved at $500,000, you hadn't shopped yet, we now, in your, your max payment was $2,021. Now we have to draw your pre-approval from five hundred to $470,000. Mm. So you're losing $30,000 in purchasing power based on just interest rates. Mm. And most that, of this sorry, has been in like three months. Sorry. So it, it was really a slow incline. In September, September 17th, the rate went from 2.67 at the beginning of the year to 2.86. So a real small jump. Mm-hmm. The rest has been since then. Which that's cr- – so – that's something to me that we constantly talk about. So one of the inspirations for tonight's show is I was at an open house this weekend and somebody had asked me, they're like, do you think I should just, they, they, they have an agent. So I was just kind of chit chatting and, but I don't know. That's what I do at open houses. You ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. Um, they asked me, do you think we should wait? Do you think the market's going to slow down? Do you think, you know, interest rates are going to go up? And like, what do you think we should do? And I said, well, you know, I'm not your agent. However, I don't think prices are going to go down. And I certainly don't think interest rates are going to drastically change. If, if anything, I see that they're probably going to continue to steadily rise. Um, and with that, every tick it goes up, every every little bit that it rises, your affordability goes down. So it's like a negative, it's like a pendulum, right? or like it's, or it's like a negative graph, right? So your interest rates rises, what you can afford goes down. The interest rates goes lower, what you can afford goes up. And especially where, like you said, inflation, we're not necessarily, our, our um, wages aren't rising to meet what our sale prices are or what our, you know, our housing market is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when is the right time to buy? Whenever you are ready. Yes. Whenever you are ready, that is the right time to buy for you, period, because yeah. of the interest rates. Right, and the house will fit into your budget and your lifestyle and everything, but there is no right time, there's no mile marker of your life that says this is the right time to buy real estate. There, It just doesn't exist. Yeah. Some people do it before they're married and have kids. Some people do the complete opposite. It really depends on where you are financially and where you feel you can afford it. But the other side of that, the other huge thing that people aren't talking about as much is rents. Rents are up $300 from where they were last year at average rent. The average rent is 
$1,771, up $300 from where they were last year. And like hot ticket areas like Phoenix and Miami, Miami's up 30%. Do we follow those trends? It, um, we, so everything that comes from West tends to hit us maybe like six months to a year later. Yeah, we okay. are, we are, and that's the thing is people forget that, you know, we could be California one day. People are like, you know, right, you know, they're going to stop. They're, they're going to crash. The prices can't keep going up. I'm like, have you seen the entire West Coast? Mm. <laughs> like, we, it, it always We visited down. San Francisco once and we found out what somebody paid for a one bedroom and I nearly like fell off the trolley. Yeah. <laughs> Fell off the tr well. Th it doesn't have sides either, so we could have fallen off. <laughs> yeah, she's full of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, Sharon always says that. That's why Sharon um, loves to watch, you know, all of the conventions that are, especially the past two years because of COVID, not being able to attend them, in, you know, yeah. in person because I'm sure we would have, um, you know, just watching all these webinars and conferences online and, and just because everything on the West Coast comes to us in about six months. So anything that's happening there, it's going to happen here. So to be ahead of the trend, to know what's going to happen um is is super important to Sharon and and to us because then we, you know we learn it and then we teach it to our agents and then you know we're the best in the business so Duh. <laughs> obviously. so obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I feel like Sorry. rentals though just to tap into that they're going to continue like I I don't I don't feel like our buyer market I feel like a lot of our buyer market, honestly, is probably going to take longer to buy because of the lack of inventory. So they're going to be forced to rent. And those rental prices, I hope I hope they don't increase the way that you've seen them over the past year. But, but Mary, what's going to stop them? That's the exactly. big question. Yeah. And here's the thing. We've been That's talking scary. about it. You know, I've, been, I've been beating the same dead horse over and over for, for three years now. But since 2018... We have been talking about the fact that millennials are entering the housing market and they are projected to enter it at the housing market the fastest pace of any generation ever. We're talking about the baby boomers, exactly what happened in the 90s, where baby boomers are coming into their age and they're finally affording houses. Because remember, that happened later in life for these people. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a giant spike in home prices because people were in, but there was a giant spike in new construction because people needed houses. That exact thing is happening right now. This was uh, slated to start in 2019 just based on aging, and it's supposed to continue on for another 10 years. Another 10 years of Yikes. people hitting their mm. prime purchasing in their lives. And so this is the people... Am I an old millennial? I'm an old millennial then. You're yeah, we're millennials, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're the oldest of the millennials. No. They're, they're just, just me specifically. Just me. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I... I forget that there's like a whole group that's coming behind me, but I shouldn't like even like some of the buyers that we had this year. I mean, God bless them. They're 25, 26, 27. I wasn't even kind of thinking about buying when I was that young because I wasn't in the position, but, but right. they are still technically millennials. So have these light on all Marblehead. People entering into a starved uh, job market. Remember, we entered the uh, like I entered the job market right as the world was crashing. And yeah, I was like, well, great, I'm competing against 65. I had three people. jobs. I was like, cool. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's had 45 years of experience. This should be a breeze. And these people are coming in. They, everybody is, you know, highly highly paid. If they've got any skill, you 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 see you're seeing really competitive wages at younger ages with or without degrees and so you're seeing qualified people entering at the market at the fastest pace ever in an area where the south shore specifically year 2030 we were slated to have 45 percent of the total housing that we needed period so we already had this, this wow. if everything was bought and sold and people were just aging and housing was coming up, we would already, based on people growing up, leaving their parents, going to have a giant shortage, over 60% shortage of where we're supposed to be. Then we have people actually purchasing into the market, taking up, you know, taking out houses. And then we have new construction slowing because the cost of goods, um, because of the hardship on getting laborers my husband's a general contractor getting someone to show up at a job right now crazy is like pulling teeth yeah mm, forget he, it he, 
he literally almost like offered to go pick one of his subcontractors up whose car broke down to get him to the job. Like, yeah. he's like, I will Uber What for do you. I, I need to do? Exactly. It's that desperate. And so you're having these new construction slow and people aging in and entering the market. How is rent going to possibly slow down? How is How could it possibly be drawn back? How could it get cheaper if there's a housing shortage? Supply and demand is always going to win, even when it comes to the most basic essential. Do you think we're going to see, so uh, I'll just ask one last question before I want you to give out your information um, before the end of the show, because this is all such, it's such a good topic. Do you think because of that, we'll start to see a lot of people leaving our area? I can't imagine that they won't. Even now, I hear a lot of people talking about going to purchase down south or going Midwest or going up north, even like people my age. Yeah, they'll follow the tech is where it was what it is. Okay. Um, there's going to be more opportunity now to get to more rural areas um, where those places also have housing shortages, where travel is up. So it's like where where we have a place in Rangeley. There is such a shortage in, in professionals for every single trade and even just the most basic things. So you can go more rural places if there's a destination. You know what I mean? If there's if there's some sort of if there's some sort of. Um, tourist section to it, you could get jobs in more rural, but really typically they follow the tech. And so, you know, a lot of big companies are moving to Texas and still paying Northeast wages, but with Texas living, and it's going to draw people away. But this has just been the craziest year. 7% of our total closings this year, and we're pretty much wrapped up, have been people from out of state relocating here to follow the tech. So wow. while I think there'll be people leaving, I've will be replenished by these new people coming in. Exactly, following following these giant um, conglomerates that are setting up shop here. So I think it's going to be pretty balanced. And, and until we figure out what to do about housing and the housing shortage, which is going to have to come up to a government level, a city state level, it's yeah. going to have to be uh, you know get rid of a lot of zoning rules. You know, it's going to have to be an all hands on deck solution. Um, we are going to keep facing this, and with inflation rising, with the Federal Reserve saying they're going to back off of their quantitative easing, which has been keeping rates low, we know rates are going to go up, we know housing is going to stay short, and we're going to see people continue to stay in their homes a lot longer into retirement because they can't afford to get out of them any longer. If they refi it into a 2.625 interest rate, they have no reason to leave. Yeah. Hmm. This next year, the year after it being just as crazy. Oh, that's such good information. Like, so there's a part of me that's really excited for next year. You got me pumped up for 2022. However, there's a part of me that's really sad. And I hope we do see a lot of those changes, like you said, at the state level and at the government level. Um, Because I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm seeing a huge divide between low income and there's no the, the middle class is disappearing and i i, I wish that was not the case we'll do another show on that but you got to give yeah. out your information jasmine glasgow from maritime mortgage team maritime you have a whole group over there so give out your information so that people know how to get in touch with you and have these conversations firsthand yeah absolutely happy to chat guys jasmine glasgow seven seven four two four zero four six six seven Again, that's going right to my cell, 774-240-4667. You can also email us at team, that's T-E-A-M, at maritime, like the ocean, loan, L-O-A-N, dot com. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And if you want to have a one-on-one consultation with any of our agents or with Sharon or Mary, you can call this I almost said the studio. Uh, you can you can call the studio if you want, but then they'll, they'll just get give you. you they'll, they'll get you to us. You can call us here at 781-826-8000. You can go to bostonconnect.com. Find all of our contact information there. If you want to listen to any of our past shows, you can go to talkrealestateroundtable.com. Go to your podcast app. We're on iTunes because we're super cool. Uh, <laughs> we're on Spotify, all that fun stuff. We're very famous down here on the South Shore. Um, but thank you so much, Jasmine, for joining us. Even... Oh, yeah, we got one minute warning. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for joining hey, us. Yeah. yeah, I know it was last minute uh, no, or like 9.30 at last night, but we always appreciate Merry you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Everybody forgets that we have Christmas that's coming up on Saturday. So yes. to all our listeners out there, Merry Christmas, Merry happy, happy Christmas. holidays. Yeah, and, uh, yeah all the holidays. Yeah. All the holidays. Whatever you celebrate, yeah. we wish that you have the best week, yeah. the best weekend. And thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. Have a great night, Jasmine. Bye, everyone.